So maybe you know the situation, you're in the car, maybe with the family for a nice trip or with friends and it's nice weather, so the windows are open and, um, well, you sing along with the tune and suddenly someone is screaming like, oh, oh my God, please, fast, close the windows, because you didn't realize this particular smell coming into your car. And then you look around and realize, oh, we just passed the field where a farmer was spreading manure in it, and you just hope that it just goes by as fast as possible. But actually for me, this smell is the smell of an absolute champion. So today I want to talk about um, manure and that this material is not just a bad smelling problem, but it's actually the best raw material you can ever have. In recent years, our farming behavior has changed a lot. So we had this small family business with one or two cows or some animals, and it changed in recent years over to uh, these huge farming enterprises. And when you think about a cow is producing um, around 40 kilograms of manure per day, if you have one or two cows, well, you can handle this. But if you have 400 cows, well, we have a huge problem. And yes, a huge amount of animals are producing a huge amount of waste. So uh, um, the smell actually that you smell when you pass by the fields um, are gases. And these gases are called as well uh, greenhouse gases because they contain CO2, um, ammoniac or others. And they have um, a huge uh, impact right now on the climate. We heard a lot about climate change right now. So on the other hand, just spreading manure onto fields, well, okay, they release the gases and we have the order problem, we have the climate impact, but also it, when it comes in contact to the groundwater, well, manure is a pure paradise for pathogens and if they come into the groundwater, it also can have an impact on our health. Well, we don't want that. And uh, goods to find a solution or a good storage possibility, it costs a lot of money. So, uh, to know maybe to find that solution that is feasible as well, and maybe we can gain also values out of manure, we have to first think about, well, what is actually manure containing about? Uh, and first, well, we have to know what are animals taking in that we know what's coming out. Uh, so, most of the herbivores that we know are farming animals, are eating plants, like grass, hay, shrubs. And they're containing three, mainly three different um, compounds. So we have lignin, hemicellulose, and cellulose. And actually, they take the plants, chew it a bit up, digest it, and we have an acidic treatment and enzymatic treatment in the, in the stomach. And what comes out has actually two different parts. So we have the part that is really digested of the animal. So it contains um, biles and f acids and animal cells, so everything also that the animal wants to get rid of. And on the other hand, and depending on the animal, um, we have a part that's not digested, so it still contains cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin. So if we are able to extract these materials from each other, we can use every compound for every purpose we want. So let's talk about the possibilities we have. Um, so we take the manure, okay, spreading on, on the fields is always a possibility. It's not the idea of, we, we don't know how to use uh, manure, but it's most, okay, we have a huge amount of it. So, okay, we can use it as fertilizer to produce um, more biomass for us, or like crops or something, or for our animals, to have more animals for more meat, milk, and leather. Well, okay, we saw that's not the best idea because with more animals, we have more manure. Um, <laughs> but on the other hand, okay, and it's already done a lot, so we can produce biogas and they're from energy. Um, in this process, not everything is converted. So what's actually way better is to produce biogas and then take the residue and use it as fertilizer. Uh, because we ha don't have the problems with the pathogens and it's way better to use uh, already partially converted material. But we also know that there must be cellulose in it. And if we know 
their cellulose in it, we can produce actually paper out of elephant manure or manure. So uh, the thing is, I'm right now specialized in elephant manure. Why elephant manure? Um, because they're, first of all, they're super cute. <laughs> <laughs> and second of all, the, the guys are really great for us. So they digest only 30 to 40 percent of what they eat. So the huge amount of material is still intact cellulose. And um, on the other hand, they, so they digest only 30 to 40 percent, so they have to eat a lot. So they produce, I think, around 60 kilograms of manure per day. Um, so they will laugh about us, as you <laughs> already heard from Teresa. So, um, yes, more cute animals. Oh, let's appreciate them a bit more. <laughs> So we know that it, their manure contains, contains a lot of cellulose, so I want to talk with you through the process how we can produce paper out of it, because it's really easy. So we take the raw material, and at this point I have to mention um, the Tiergarten Schönbrunn because the guys are really awesome and give us um, free elephant manure. <laughs> yeah. For free. <laughs> So, well, yes, for storage reason, you have to dry it and disinfect it somehow. Okay, the guys, I'm sorry now for the guys uh, in my lab. I'm sorry for the first three days. It smelled horrible. Um, so, well, yeah, the first treatment, we can treat it with caustic soda to get rid of everything that is, um, or, or is coming from the animal, like these dead cells and this mucus and every yucky stuff we don't want. So the material afterwards is still a bit brownish, um, not very suitable for making paper. So we add a bleaching treatment. And what we have is already cellulose, and we can produce paper out of it. But as a material chemist, we aim for something bigger, not just eh, paper. So we add a grinding treatment to get nanocellulose. So what is nanocellulose? It's Cellulose in the range of nanometer. Now everyone, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> so nanometer is when you think about a hair is around a micro, some micrometers. That's the last thing you can feel with your finger. And nanocellulose is way smaller. You can't see it anymore. So we can produce paper out of these two different materials. And what we get is with the non-grinded material, we can get paper where you actually can write it. It's as good as normal copy paper. It's as strong. And yeah, maybe you can write either your next love letter, well, maybe your next hate letter. Dear Peter, I hate you so much, I write on shit. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, but this is not the thing we're aiming as material science, we want to produce way better materials. So out of these uh, nanocellulose, we already grind it down, um, we can produce nanocellulose papers. And these are even four or five times stronger than normal copy paper. So these are actually high performance materials we can use uh, to substitute maybe petrol based um, materials that are already right now used. And um, for example, well, we can produce um, airplanes out of it. Well, not kind of these, but like real airplanes. And this is actually not a new idea. So they already produced um, airplanes out of paper in the, during the Second World War. So maybe we can take a step back and think about, well, why not? Maybe we can just exchange parts of airplanes right now that are feasible and are good, and the material that we produce um, is good enough to substitute petrol-based materials. So these, these airplanes that were built in, during the Second World War, they weren't out of shit, so know that you know that. But wouldn't it be just awesome to have material produced out of this? So maybe the next time when you just smell this distinct smell and you're in your car, take a deep breath and think about <laughs> this awesome raw material. Thank you very much.